Early in 2021, the Boeing company, along with executives, management, and rank-and-file employees, were facing potential criminal charges that would have banned them from winning future government defense contracts ever again. It would have been a death sentence for Boeing. So what did Boeing do in response? They decided to cooperate and cut a deal with the government. In exchange for giving the government two scapegoats and former chief test pilot Mark Forkner and his deputy pilot Patrick Gustafson, Boeing would receive a slap on the wrist and a ridiculously small fine of $244 million. In doing this, Boeing claimed that Forkner and Gustafson were the axis of evil masterminds, while Boeing claimed to know nothing about their evil doings. For his part, Gustafson has turned state's evidence and will testify against Boeing, leaving only Forkner holding the bag. Oh sure, there are tons of childish obnoxious emails from Forkner bragging about his so-called Jedi mind tricking skills and fooling world regulators into approving a flawed 737 MAX. But being a childish obnoxious jerk isn't a crime in and of itself. Because I think we can all agree. Forkner was just following orders, as well as being a jerk. So then why is he alone taking the fall? Well, maybe that was the plan all along. Well, those of you that are so inclined, warm up your Maximus as a Boeing hater comments because I have a blockbuster story for you today. Was the fix in from the beginning? That's next on Maximus. Greetings everybody, Maximus here. I recently came across an amazing story in the nether regions of the Google webs. This is a story that should have been on every news site across the US, but news outlets these days are too busy catering to the woke adult children of the world. But never fear, Maximus is always here to give you the real grown up news. This story comes from a site called the Corporate Crime Reporter, as well as some investigative journalism by yours truly. So earlier this year, the United States Justice Department brought a criminal case against Boeing for the two deadly MAX crashes. The case was filed in court in Fort Worth, Texas. Why Texas, you ask? Well, that's a fantastic question. One I also ask. Fort Worth, Texas has zero connection to either Boeing or the victims. So then why not Seattle or Washington, D.C.? Or how about New York, or even Chicago, Boeing's corporate hometown? Puzzling, right? Okay, let's stick a pin in that for now. The case was filed by then U.S. Attorney from the Northern District of Texas, Aaron Neely Cox. Never heard of her? Me either, but stick with me, you will. So with Aaron Neely Cox in charge of the prosecution came the shocking news of a settlement between Boeing and the U.S. government. The case was settled with what's called a Deferred Prosecution Agreement. A Deferred Prosecution Agreement is when the government has brought charges against the defendant, but agrees not to move forward on those charges. In exchange, the defendant agrees to abide by a certain requirement or conditions. However, concerning this agreement, the corporate crime reporter quotes Columbia Law Professor John Coffey, who called the settlement one of the worst deferred prosecution agreements he had ever seen. In the agreement, Boeing was not required to plead guilty to any of the allegations and not one of Boeing's executives were ever charged. But still more baffling is that Boeing's deferred prosecution agreement included what many legal minds say is unheard of in cases of this magnitude. The government said that the need for a compliance monitor to make sure Boeing kept their end of the deal was not necessary because the misconduct was neither pervasive across the organization or undertaken by a large number of employees or facilitated by senior management. Did you catch all that? How could U.S. Attorney Aaron Neely Cox even know that? What, is she psychic? She never questioned Boeing senior management, so how could she know the misconduct was neither pervasive or undertaken by a large number of employees? Professor Coffey told the corporate crime reporter that is without precedent, meaning, of course, it had never happened in the history of the U.S. government. Coffee said, I have not seen that anywhere else and I have looked at a number of deferred prosecution agreements. However, the fact was that both Boeing and the FAA knew the MCAS system was fatally flawed. 
So in a criminally ironic twist, by redirecting public attention on Forkner's lying to the FAA and World Airlines, or his somewhat unethical personality, by doing this, Boeing performed their own form of Jedi mind tricking on its customers, as well as world governments. So then, how did senior people at the FAA and Boeing manage such a clean escape? Good question. And that brings us to this. Aaron Neely Cox the U.S. attorney who was in charge of prosecuting Boeing, left the Department of Justice this September to become a partner at Kirkland & Ellis. And who was Kirkland & Ellis? Kirkland & Ellis is Boeing's criminal defense counsel who just months before defended Boeing against her and the U.S. government. Oh, but it gets better. Her joining the firm was announced by her new partner, Mark Flip. Well, who's Mark Flip, you ask? Wow, you are full of great questions today. Well, as Boeing's counsel, Mark Flip was the guy. Now wait for it. That signed the Sweetheart Deferred Prosecution Agreement on behalf of Boeing. Oh, and Flip, coincidentally, also came to Kirkland & Ellis from the Department of Justice, where he issued the much-touted Flip Memorandum, setting forth principles of federal prosecution of business organizations. Professor Coffey told a corporate crime reporter in response to Kirkland and Ellis hiring of Cox, there never seemed to be an adequate or even plausible reason for why this case was brought in Texas when Boeing had no connection whatsoever to that state. But now that U.S. Attorney Cox is joining the defense counsel's law firm, that suggests that they were both on the same wavelength about finding a quick and gentle resolution of the case that did not embarrass or injure Boeing. Coffey said, I cannot say that this was unlawful or even unethical on the available evidence, but this is not how an adversarial system of justice normally works, nor should it. He said, this is a very friendly system of criminal justice for large corporations. Michael Stumo and Nadia Milleron, who lost their 24-year-old daughter Sumaya Stumo in the Ethiopian crash, said in response to the news of the deal, we were outraged that the Department of Justice prosecutors cut a sweetheart deal with Boeing, which let former Boeing CEO Dennis Muhlenberg and the Boeing executives and board members off the hook for their criminal negligence and fraud which caused the death of Samaya, while they were busy enriching themselves. Also, they said we were confused about why the Northern District of Texas was chosen by the Justice Department, given that none of the criminal behavior had anything to do with that district. Was it a compliant judge that Boeing favored? Was it a compliant prosecutor that knew Boeing's criminal defense team? This is truly shocking new information, they said. Paul Hudson of the consumer group Flyers Rights said this case is an example of the revolving door where thousands of ex-government employees go to work for parties they regulated as government officers. But the revolving door is not supposed to be a conveyor belt, Hudson said. If a chief federal prosecutor joins a criminal defendant party or its defense firm shortly after representing the U.S. government in a related criminal matter, it raises both appearance concerns and ethical issues, he said. I've had my fun on the channel poking fun at Mark Forkner and his juvenile emails, but I'm starting to feel sorry for this guy. And not only is Boeing apparently going to let him take the fall for this whole mess, but the U.S. government is content with doing so too. I know we always ask you to comment at the end of a video because it's really important to the YouTube algorithm, but I'm looking forward to hearing what you all have to say on this subject, especially if you're not usually the commenting type. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Well, that's going to wrap it up for now. As always, if you'd like to help support the channel like someone did by purchasing three virtual cups of coffee, thank you someone, whoever you are. And Nigel, thank you too for your support, I really appreciate it. You can always find the links down below. And before you go, make sure you subscribe, like, share, and ring the bell. And remember, leave the rub around the runway and your troubles on the ground. And I will see you next time in the air. Yeah, this is Maximus.